This is just a collection of bits and pieces, uh, updates, interesting things I found, a correction. They were too small to go into their own video. Uh, first up, the narration song tool. That had to be updated because for these videos that I do, I'll often record the whole thing in one go, which results in a sample being several minutes long. And so it would always have to redo the BPM and sometimes the LPB just to accommodate that within one pattern. And it was a pain and the whole thing's supposed to be automatic. So updated the tool, it'll now say, hey, why don't I do that for you automatically? And so it does. Uh, it will alert the user if the sample is still going to be too long at the minimum BPM of 20 and LPB of 1. But that is a sample of about half an hour long. So it will just tell you about it and it won't make any changes itself. But who knows, maybe in another couple of years I'll update it again and have it automatically cut up the sample for me. Next, uh, something interesting I found is that for uh, an effect device's buttons or a drop down menu with a set number of entries, when you automate them via the LFO, they're not all evenly spread out. The first and last ones, they have half the weight of those in the middle. And so when you're using the LFO, uh, typically I'll use it in saw mode so that it goes through in a linear fashion and then back to the start. This means that you don't spend the same amount of time at the first and last entries as compared to the middle ones. Now initially I thought, oh, this is for the sign option so that each of them will be equal. But no, actually when you go into the sign option, even more time is spent at the first and last entries. So, uh, why exactly is it done like this? Mm, I don't know. The thing is, for equal timing, using these types of buttons or drop down menus, you in fact need to use custom points mode. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're doing that yourself. Next up, a uh, gamepad support video. I misspoke when I was talking about the controls on the Steam Deck. I said they had less options compared to a standard gamepad. That's uh, obviously complete crap. Uh, I wasn't really thinking when I spoke that. I knew it was wrong, but uh, it's just one of the things that happens when you record these types of videos improvised. Next, I've been advocating for API access to LFO points within the custom mode of an LFO. And uh, it would be handy for everyone, but it's really selfish because I'm looking for making the Drawtomator tool that I made to be as useful as possible. And there's a precedent for having access to these types of points. The modulation envelope and stepper devices, for example, they have API access to those points. And the reason I'd like to access those LFO custom points is because it's the best way for the Drawtomator to run independently as part of Renoise itself instead of being permanently attached to the tool. And this would allow the user to take that LFO in the custom mode and do anything they want with it within their own song. They would have complete control. And that would really open up the possibilities for the Drawtomator tool. And speaking of which, I'm going to have a major update for that very soon. It'll be expanding upon it in different ways, and that will make it very useful along those lines, but having access to the LFO points would really solidify this as a, a good step forward. And lastly, a few years ago when I did the repeater video, I came up with a little chart which showed you the fractions of lines that each point on the repeater grid would go to at an LPB of 4. And so you could use that to incorporate your own, uh, I guess percussion would be the best way of doing this, But 
you could do it for anything. Obviously, I was only able to do this for the sections below the free section of the grid because for that it can be anything from 1 to 128, including decimal places. So what I would like to do is create a new tool which will automatically tell you what the line fractions will be for any section of the repeater. So for any setting in free mode, it will automatically tell you what the line fractions will be and I'd like an option to automatically adjust any notes you have or maybe insert your own notes and then it will place those line fractions. You would link the tool to an existing repeater and then it will automatically adapt to any changes you make so that any accompaniments, usually on percussion, it will follow exactly what the repeating is doing. And I think that could lead to some cool interactions between what is being repeated and the accompaniments following along with the repeating in a way that's not normally possible. And we'll see if we can get some great music out of that.